So, what do I need? Right, coffee. This time we're gonna create this cyberpunkish 3D hologram by animating 3D objects natively in After Effects, treating them with traditional VFX compositing and tracking them into a cyberpunk looking cityscape. And you don't even need to be a 3D expert, because we're gonna prepare the 3D objects in the simplest of all 3D programs. My approach is based on the holograms shown in Blade Runner 2049. You have these projector beams and also the scan lines following the topography of the object, in this case of the person. You can download this beautiful drone shot of a skyline at night for free and use it as your background plate. I put the link in the description below. It's the city of Hong Kong, which has been serving as a blueprint for cyberpunk cityscapes for movies from Blade Runner to Akira. Camera track the footage and find a spot where you want your hologram to beam from. Select at least three tracking points to define the area and right-click to create a solid and a camera as well. Then check if the plane sits rock-solid on the footage. And that's it for now in After Effects. Open Adobe Dimension, which you have access to as a Creative Cloud subscriber, and click on the coffee cup in the model section that puts the 3D model into the 3D scene. In the scene panel, select the cup and click on the Select Material icon to lower the opacity. This is necessary to later achieve this kind of transparent hologram look. Then select the lid and lower its material's opacity as well. Next, select the cup, go to File, Export and Selected Models. In my previous video, I recommended exporting 3D models as an OBJ file, but you can also export the model as a GLB, which stores both the 3D and material data into a single file. Then select the lid and export it as a separate 3D object. But we are not finished yet. Scroll down the Assets panel and put the Splash C object into the scene. Same procedure here. Decrease the material's opacity and export it as a GLB file. Back in After Effects, import these GLB files and drag them into the Composition window. A Model Settings window pops up and please avoid clicking on Make Comp Size, like I did here because it'll scale each model differently. Look at this giant lid. Do it again and better adjust the object scale. When you parent the two 3D objects to the remaining one and copy the position of the track solid, this is where we want the coffee cup to be placed, you just have to paste it to the parent object and the other objects will move in sync. And because we don't want the hologram to be positioned on the ground, reposition the objects upwards. Then create a point light with a cyan color, duplicate it and set a magenta color, because these colors are typical for a cyberpunk look. To lighten the scene, I would recommend to work in the two views mode, so that you have different perspectives to have a better idea where to place the lights. Put one light to the right and one to the left to get some dark areas in the model. And when you're happy with the lighting, you can animate the 3D objects to your liking. In my case, I let the lid and the cup fly away from each other with simple linear rotation and position animation to let the coffee spill out with a scale animation. Like I said in my previous video, you cannot apply effects directly to the 3D object layers. To work around this issue, you can either use an adjustment layer or better pre-compose each 3D object layer. But first, we have to duplicate the camera three times. Same with the two point lights. And for each 3D object, we have to select a camera and a pair of point lights additionally before we pre-compose them, so we can preserve the perspective and the lighting for each 3D object. You see what happens when you pre-compose 3D objects separately. Because they are not in the same 3D bin anymore, they do not intersect correctly with each other. But that doesn't matter for us. Because we want to create a transparent hologram, you can simply use the Add Blend mode, which by the way is impossible with pure 3D object layers. And now that we have all 3D objects pre-composed, here comes the fun part, because we can now apply effects to them. Select all pre-coms, duplicate them, create a new pre-com to have them all united in one layer, apply a Find Edges effect, check the Invert checkbox and set Blend Mode to Screen. The edges don't only give the objects a clear outline, to me they also give them some kind of an anime style. You can also duplicate this pre-comp layer, put it below the other pre-coms, delete the Find Edges effect and apply a Fill effect with a black color instead. 
With this layer, you can then control how strong the 3D cup blends with the cityscape by adjusting the opacity. Speaking of the background, at this point we can color grade the background plate towards being more cyberpunkish. I personally find it better to judge the look of our hologram when it already sits on the right environment. We can do this quick and dirty by applying a curves effect to it, increasing the contrast and adding a hue and saturation effect. In hue and saturation, go into the blue channel and increase the dial until the channel has a cyan color. Then go into the red channel and shift all the red parts towards magenta. And with the background now graded, you can readjust the opacity of the bottom precomp to refine the blending. Next, go into the 3D cup composition and create a solid with comp size, which we're gonna need for a reveal transition. Then apply a CC cylinder effect to it. To match the cylinder with the cup object, open position and rotation of the CC cylinder effect, go to the 3D object layer to separate the dimensions of the position attribute. Then grab CC cylinder's position pick whip and connect the X position to X position, Y to Y and Z to Z position. Same with the rotation attributes. But they still don't match because they do not exist in the same 3D space. To fix this, go into the X position expression editor and add minus the half of your composition width. In my case, it's the half of 3840, which is 1920. In the Y position, you add minus the half of the composition's height. And because I work in 4K, it's 1080. And now the positions are congruent. Z rotation works. X rotation works as well. But Y rotation fails. To fix this, go to CC Cylinder, open Rotation and change Rotation Order to ZYX. This should fix the Y Rotation. Now you can adjust CC Cylinder's radius and the solid's height to fully cover the cup. Apply a linear wipe effect to it, set rotation to negative 180 degrees and animate the transition completion with an increased feather value. Then apply a turbulent displace effect. Set displacement to vertical displacement and increase amount and size. Next, add a fractal noise, increase the scale and the contrast, and finally apply a mosaic effect with more horizontal and vertical blocks. In CC Cylinder, you can also increase the light intensity for more contrast. Then change blending mode to stencil alpha, and now we have a digital looking wipe transition. Now that we have CC Cylinder set up, we can now create the scan lines following the cup surroundings. To do this, duplicate the solid layer, delete all the effects except of CC Cylinder on the layer below, apply a grid effect, change size from to width and height sliders, increase the width value until one vertical line is left and adjust the height slider to set the amount of scan lines you like. To get rid of the vertical line, just increase the X anchor value until it disappears. And because the cup now appears a bit too dark, you can either adjust the grid values or switch the blending mode to Silhouette Alpha. To later transfer the scanline effect to the other objects, copy the solid layer. And it should look like this, where the Find Edges effect even make the scan lines more visible. But before we move on, apply a gradient wipe effect to the Find Edges layer, animate transition completion and the lid layer's opacity with values alternating between 0 and 100 every frame to achieve a strobe effect. This way, the lid gets its own reveal animation. In the lid precomp, paste the scan line solid we copied before into the composition. Because the lid is also basically a cylinder object, you can match CC Cylinder to it the way we did before in the cup precomp. The splash object is a bit tricky because it's not a cylinder but an organic shape. But we can use the scanline cylinder as a starting point to fake some kind of a UV mapping. Again, expression pick whip CC Cylinder's transform properties to the ones of the 3D splash. Because in this perspective the grid produces an unwanted moiré effect, change Render option to Outside in CC Cylinder. After adjusting the grid to your liking, pre-compose it with a duplicated camera and use the 3D splash as a travel mat. Then duplicate the camera again and pre-compose it with a 3D splash. Because we didn't include the lights, the pre-comp contains a clean 3D splash. 
Next, apply a displacement effect to the scanline precomp and use the clean 3D splash precomp as the displacement map layer. And look at that! The scanline seemed to follow the splash's 3D topography. Now that we have a good hologram foundation, we can move on to the next fun part of this tutorial. To create the projector beams, you can apply the really cool Godrays plugin to every 3D object precomp. It's from Production Crate, and you can download it for free. It reminds a bit of Trap Coat Shine, where you can also adjust the ray's direction with the origin's position. But this effect is special, because when you change the direction to in, the rays beam towards the origin, creating the projector beams. Because it's a 2D effect and we want the rays to behave correctly in 3D space, we can use the 3D solid that we created from the camera tracker and reposition it to where we want the rays start to beam from. In Godrays Expression Editor, we can define the center, which is the track solid we have to expression pick with, and project its 3D coordinates to the composition's 2D space via the 2Comp expression. Copy the expression and paste it into every existing Godrays effect in your main comp. To make the beams a bit more realistic, we can add some flickering by using the wiggle expression in Godrays Exposure attribute. And actually, we're done yet. But if you're still patient, I want to show you another existing 3D technique that can coexist with a native 3D object similar to CC Cylinder. Create a new composition and a shape layer and add a poly star to it. Convert it into a Bezier path. Open the Create Nulls from Path script and click on the Points Follow Nulls button. Then check the 3D layer checkboxes, but just for the null layers. Next, create a text layer and position it into the polygon center. Similar to Godrays 2D origin, the polygon stroke, which is actually 2D, now seems to exist in 3D space. You can give the stroke another color and duplicate this whole rig to shift it into Z space. Now that we have a basic 3D wireframe setup built upon shape layer strokes, you can copy paste it into the main composition where you can adjust the rotation and position of the elements. With a duplicated camera, pre-compose the whole setup so you can later apply effects to it. You can animate it and apply any shape layer operator to it, like the fill operator. Then you can complete the 3D wireframe by connecting the two polygons with connecting lines. I know, it's a bit too rushed, but you can watch my 3D shapes with shape layers tutorial where I explain this technique step by step. But sorry guys, I have one more thing I want to share with you, especially with all the Saber plugin fans among you. Create a black solid, add a new mask to it, and expression pick whip the mask path to the polygon's shape path. Then apply Video Copilot's free Saber plugin to it and change core type to layer mask. With this technique, the Saber effect seems to be part of the 3D space. You can duplicate the solid layer and reconnect the mask path to the other polygon path to have Saber on it too. In my Make Saber 3D tutorial, I'm explaining this technique in full detail. And now you can apply the effects and compositing techniques to the 3D wire precomp like I've shown you before. One very very last thing, I promise, to make the compositing perfect. In Mocha AE, track some of the bottom buildings of the background plate to create a masked foreground layer. This way, the hologram looks well integrated into the cityscape. And that's it guys! Mm. Actually, this is latte macchiato, not pure coffee. Anyways, the new 3D feature is far from being able to produce photoreal animations. But like I've shown in my previous video, there are cases where a limited 3D can still be useful. For example, when creating holograms. Think of sci-fi hot animations or overlays in technical explainer videos. Who cares about limited 3D when you have all the effects and tools inside After Effects to make something out of it? Just be creative! But I'm really excited to explore more creative uses of native 3D in After Effects. See you next time.